Now the next exchange I'm going to show you is OKX. I'm going to show you how to use the leverage platform and ultimately know how to trade on this actual exchange. So once you've signed in, you will then come to the section of trading and you want to go to the futures column over here and you want to click on that. Then what it's going to do, it's going to take you to your dashboard. This is where you're going to actually be doing your trading. Now in the top left over here is where you're going to select your token. One thing, just make sure that you are using the USDT pair. That has the best volume and the best liquidity to get in and out of trades. But this is ultimately where you can select all the tokens. And then what's nice about this exchange is you actually have all the tokens below here on the side and this stays here. And this is nice when you're trading multiple trades because you can easily jump to the next coin and you can basically jump from coin to coin to see that your trades are going correct uh, or you're basically managing each trade. Then what you have on the right of that is you have your actual chart. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to come select the trading view option. If you click on that, all of a sudden it will give you a toolbar and it will give you the same tools that you have on trading view. You'll have your different time frames. You've got your little arrow on where you can select the different time frames. And then you can also add indicators if you want at any point. I don't really put indicators on my charts on the exchange. That's all for trading view. Remember, that's the messy place. And this is a place where you're going to keep it clean and have a basic understanding of your actual trades. Then on the right of that, you have your order book. The guys that are selling, the guys that are buying, and then you have trade history. We don't really pay attention to this too much, but ultimately you still need to understand when you want to buy a token, you need someone to sell. And when you want to sell a token, you need someone to buy. Very simple. Then if you go below that, this is where you're going to actually be taking your trade. Now this little column over here is where you're going to select cross or isolated. We know we use isolated. Then on the right of that, this is where you're going to select the amount of leverage that you actually want. And I'm going to be using 3x as the example on this actual trade. And I'll click on that. Now the trade that I'm going to show you is Matic. So you want to come to the top left corner over here and ultimately you want to select the token that you want to trade. And I want to do Matic to the USDT pair. And I'll show you why I'm looking at taking this trade now. Then when you go below that, now I'm getting ready to trade this token. You got two ways. You have your limit and your market. These are your ways to get in and out of the actual trades. And you have a stop loss, which I'll show you that shortly. Now, one thing to understand is this is a separate wallet from your spot wallets or any other wallets that are in the actual exchange. This is purely the futures wallet. And what's nice about this is whatever funds you put in this wallet and you trade does not affect the other funds, which is really, really a good thing and a great thing to understand that you are protected. But to put money into this account, you'll click on this little arrow over here, this little icon. And then this is where you're going to be either sending money into this account or you're flushing out profits back into your spot. But this is ultimately where you're going to transfer USDT in and out of the actual account. Once you have transferred funds, you will see under the available column over here, the amount of funds that you've put in. And it's sitting on both sides. Now, the example of the trade that I'm going to be giving you will be Matic because I've done some analysis and I'll show you why. So you want to make sure that you come to the top of here and you select Matic. Now, what's very important to understand is when you've typed in your token, you want to make sure it's, it's under the futures section. So you'll see here they have Matic to USDT, but this is for spot. So ultimately, you can still use this platform or this dashboard to trade spot if you select the spot token. But we want perpetual. We want the futures token. So you want to select on that. Once you've done that, then you can come down and get ready to actually buy or sell the token. So the first thing I want you to understand is this is its own wallet and it is not connected to any other wallets in the exchange, which is nice. If anything happens to the funds here, it will not affect any of the other funds sitting around in the different wallets in the exchange. So the first thing you want to know is how do I transfer money in and out of this wallet? It's this little icon over here. If you click on that icon, it will allow you to send from your, your funding account to your trading account, which is the perpetual account, or you can even send it once you've made profits from your trading account back into your funding account. So this is ultimately the place where you're going to be transferring funds in and out of uh, this actual wallet. Then once you've had your funds in the actual uh, wallet, you'll see them over here at available. You'll see it on the side of long. Now, previously, the other exchanges show you open or closed trades. This one's slightly different. It's saying buy long or sell short, which is basically the same thing. And I'll show you how to open and close trades with them. But ultimately, you have this value sitting on both sides, saying that you can long or short the market, up or down. Very simple. Now, the trade that I want to show you guys is this trade over here. 
I now jumped on the four hour chart because the smaller time frames weren't giving me a very clear indication. So I wanted to zoom out and see where's this chart actually sitting? Where, what's this token actually doing? And what happened over here is I actually put a trend line in play that had three touches. And recently we dropped that. Now we know when we're looking for areas of taking trades, we're either buying on support or always shorting if we've lost support, we've tested at resistance and now we're expecting downside, right? And you can see over here, I wanted to see does Matic bounce? All of a sudden we lost trend. And now what we've done is we've come back up to retest. Now for me, this is not a long, this is a short, we've lost momentum. So ultimately I want to look for a short on the retest of this level over here. And then what we have is another high on the left of that. We don't wanna make any higher highs if we're expecting the market to go down. So what this does is it gives me an area of where to put a stop loss. So once I had an area of where I wanted to take a short, I know where to put my stop loss, I then put my risk to reward ratio tool for the short column. So if you have a look over here, the short position tool. And I put that in and I'm like, okay, this is telling me I'm risking 2.4% of my capital. Now I've shown you smaller time frame trades. This is a very high percentage. Remember, when we're using higher time frames, the range gets bigger. Now, if the range gets bigger, it doesn't mean your leverage must stay the same. This is very important. If you're zooming out and you're playing on a bigger range, you need to lower your leverage because you're getting a higher percentage move on the actual token. So when I see a token's offering me 2.4% of risk, I'm not gonna do a 10X. Because if I 10X, it means I'm risking 24% of my capital on one trade. That's way too much uh, risk for that actual trade. So what it means is I need to lower my leverage. So in this example, I'm gonna be showing, I'm gonna be using a 3X, because that makes sense for me for risk, because that means I'm risking more or less around about seven to 8% for the trade. Then what I did is I marked out these previous areas. Where is this trade worth it for me to actually take it? And I managed to choose this little area over here at the bottom where we've been previously. Remember, if we've been here before, we can definitely come there again. And I put my tool down to that area and it basically showed me a profit of 14, close to 15%. If I times that by three, all of a sudden it's 45%. So I'm risking 8% of my capital for a 45% return. Now that makes sense for me and I can see that my risk to reward ratio is one to six. Now I can take the actual trade. So let's take the trade. 